Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, where you can sell your MacBook, you can buy a MacBook, you can ask me hardware-related repair questions, uh, all sorts of stuff. That is at rdklinc.com. So today I'm going to do another video that probably only five people on the planet will care about, but uh, hopefully it will help them. Uh, and the question is how to tell the difference between the 2011 and 2012 MacBook Pros. Uh, not in terms of GPUs or, or specs, but in terms of visually inspecting them. How do you pop open the bottom, look at the board, and know what you're seeing? Um, th so this is probably going to be useful to you know, recyclers, refurb refurbishers, those sorts of people who are just trying to sort out uh, inventory that they have in front of them. So, very simple actually. This is a 2012, this is a 2011. Uh, you just need to look at the... Uh, video uh, connectors you don't even have to, these are taken out but you don't have to even take them out the 2012 if you look at this there's a, a clasp a wire sort of a locking mechanism that locks it into place when it's plugged in on the 2012 this is a round wire so again it's a round wire and on the 2011 it is a it is flat on either side so it's a, it's a thin sort of wire, but it's flat on either side. And in addition, the 2012 it is a silver color, whereas the 2011 tends to be sort of a copper uh, gold color. So let me see if I can... I don't know if you're going to be able to tell very well the difference looking at them there, but hopefully you will. So yeah. That's basically the number one thing I look for when I pop these open. Um, is it a 2012 with a round wire or a 2011 with a flat wire? So the next thing is you're probably going to be wanting to put 2011 screen assemblies onto 2012s. Why is that? Be that is because 2011 ha uh, models have chronic GPU issues, which means as a refurbisher uh, you'll, or a recycler, you'll have piles of 2011s um, that have good screens, good top case keyboards, but bad boards. And then you might have some 2012s with smashed screens. So why not use the 2011 screen assemblies on the 2012s? Um, a lot of people will say you can't do that. They'll say that the, the video connectors and the sockets are, are different. And it is true that they are a little different, but you can uh, get them to work. And it, it basically has to do with the, 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 the shape of the connectors and sockets, just a little bit, little bit different, but you can modify them to work. Basically what it comes down to is, so you're putting a 2011, you know, this guy, into this, uh, this socket, what you wanna do is just modify the socket slightly. There's a little bit of a, a lip here, and you just kinda wanna lift that up and then lift the other side up. Just kind of give it a little more room for the, um, the connector to go in there. And uh, it will tend to go in easily on this side, the left side, but then it'll, it's more difficult on the right side. So again, you just want to lift it up a little more and then just sort of nudge it in there, apply a little bit of force. A little tricky, but you can do it. And once it is in there, make sure it's, it's, it's uh, it's snug, it's, it's flush against the connector. Um, the next problem is getting this 2011 locking mechanism to lock over the 2012. It'll, it will sort of resist. And again, just keep trying. Eventually you'll get it. I'll use you know, the flat end of a pair of tweezers to kind of you know, just push it down until you hear that little click that tells you it's over the lip. And make sure you get it on both sides and then you're good. So yeah, uh, 2011 screen assemblies will work on 2012s. You just have to jump over that that little hurdle. Um, and you know, other than that, they are they are exactly the same screen assembly. Uh, the airport wire, uh, the, the Wi-Fi cables, uh, it has the same configuration. So you don't have to get into the hinge and, and mess with with cabling or anything like that. They they are compatible. So. What else can I tell you? Um, okay, here is a 2012 um, 13-inch. These two that I've shown you are 15-inch. The 13-inch 2012, the hard drive cable, 
is kind of fat looking. It's kind of wide, as you can see, compared to the hard drive cable of the, uh, the 15. You can see how this is thin compared to sort of a fat one. So if you see this fat cable, you're looking at a 13 inch uh, 2012. The 15 inch uh, models have the thinner cable and the uh, 13 inch 2011 has the thinner cable. So basically, if you're looking at 13 inch machines, fat cable tells you 2012, thinner cable tells you uh, 2011 or previous. So there's that. Um, one last thing I'll point out, this is a, again, 2000, um, the 2012 13 inch. Serial numbers can tell you uh, some interesting things. So TY3, if it ends in TY3, then this is the 2.5 gigahertz i5 13 inch. So TY3 13 inch, uh, 2.5 gigahertz i5. TY4 is the 2.9 gigahertz i7 uh, 13 inch. So TY3 TY3 2.5 i5, TY4 2.9 gigahertz i7. And then here's the 15 inch uh, 2012. Serial numbers are, can also tell you some stuff on, on these. V33 is the entry level uh, 2.3 gigahertz i7 quad. So again, V33, 2.3 gigahertz i7 quad. V34 is the 2.6 gigahertz uh, i7 quad. So the higher end version is V34. So V33, V34. There's also a build to order 2.7 gigahertz uh, i7 quad. I don't recall what the serial number is uh, on those. It may be V35, but I'm not 100% sure at the moment. So anyway, um, that's about it. That's about it as far as the obvious physical differences inside these machines. I hope you found this useful and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.